Hello everyone, this is me, George from Pageant Unpressed, and I have a very special guest with me all the way from Malaysia. He is the reigning Manhattan International Malaysia 2024, Joash or Joe Cho. So hello, hello to you, Joe. Hello, nice to meet you. Uh, very, very honored to be here, to be having this interview with you and also the team. Yes, and you'll be flying very soon to Thailand to represent a country at the Manhattan International. So how do you feel as the title holder? Um, I'm actually pretty excited because this is my first time doing something international for pageantry and uh, looking forward to be meeting every single one of you, uh, all the contestants over 40 countries and also uh, everyone who is really looking forward for a really, really great show. Really looking forward for it. Yes. So before we start the interview officially, would you mind introducing yourself to our viewers? So just your name, age and Malaysia with like a lot of enthusiasm and passion. Okay, so guys, I'm um, Joash, you can call me Joe, um, short form is Joe, and also I am 27 years old this year, and I'll be representing my home country, Malaysia. So some people uh, know Malaysia as the Asian country of food. We are very famous for food, and we are really, really, uh, we have a lot of culture, since there's three main race in Malaysia, which is Chinese, uh, Malay, and also Indian. So uh, as somebody who is born and raised in Malaysia, I'm very proud of this country of mine because uh, what I learned through this culture is that uh, a country can have so much differences between one another, but there is no conflict or not much conflict. Instead, we embrace it and it creates such a beautiful uh, nation per se. Yeah. So yes, I, and I think if that, yeah. I think the slogan for your country is, is it Malaysia truly Asia? Does it really yeah. reflect the slogan of the country? Correct. Yeah. So uh, Malaysia has a really, really uh, beautiful spot in my heart because uh, as much as I love the people, uh, the food, also uh, the nature, the scenery that you can actually get from the country. Right. And you're from Kuala Lumpur, the capital. So let's say someone who has never been to Malaysia, maybe have been to like other countries in Asia, but haven't really tried out Malaysia. Uh, what are the tourist spots or the, the places, any special places that you, you would recommend the person to visit? Well, there's so much to visit in Malaysia. But I would say that if you are somebody who enjoys the city, you can definitely check out Kuala Lumpur. There's so much to do in Kuala Lumpur. But if you are somebody who cares about food and love food like crazy you can check out penang or malacca or even uh on the sabah and sarawak side which there is a lot of nature like hiking nice beaches you can get everything in malaysia and i was looking at your social media it seems that you have traveled within a country quite a bit like different places in malaysia um, you have been abroad too right like internationally you have traveled yeah. so what has yeah. been your favorite city okay Let's not go for Malaysia this time outside the country. What has been your favorite city outside of Malaysia and why? Why is it your favorite city you have visited so far? So from my experience of traveling abroad, I think uh, my favorite city would be uh, New Zealand. I love New Zealand. I think uh, it resonates with my life a lot, especially when uh, you are from a city like Kuala Lumpur. Everything is really, really fast paced. Like, uh, career is fast, work is fast, uh, everything you do is out of stress. So going to New Zealand made me realize that life is so much simpler when you can tone down and really sink in the moment and enjoy every single piece of uh, the current state, which is the now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so where, really, where, where really exactly it. did you go in, in New Zealand? Like, because I, like a city in New Zealand. So. Which city yeah. did you travel to? So uh, mainly Auckland because previously I was traveling around and also uh, I was actually there for a competition as well. So okay. actually, the, yeah. So overall, I actually enjoy uh, New Zealand as a whole, especially the yeah. people, uh, the nation, also the food actually. Right. I heard it's quite yeah. big right? in terms of uh, the landscape. I heard there's not many buildings. It's a lot of empty spaces. Like, did you go outside of the city too, city centre, like uh, countryside? Yeah. So yeah, how was it? Was it like peaceful, the nature? 
um, for the nature um, for those I couldn't answer much because I was there when I was very young. So oh, right. okay. yeah. They should go back now, like you know, after you get the title. You can travel yeah, to different definitely. countries. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so how would you describe yourself, Joe, in three words to describe yourself? Uh, I would say the three words to describe myself would be uh, I'm somebody who is determined, or some would say I'm stubborn. Okay. I am very, very passionate because uh, from young, I have always believed in doing uh, what my heart tells me to, very right. purpose driven. And also, I'm very, very adventurous. Uh, I love exploring new activities, uh, just finding myself, exploring and discovering myself a little bit more every single day. Yeah, so uh, I love doing activities like uh, diving, uh, trekking, hiking. It's only these few years where I really discovered myself a little bit more, uh, probably due to past experience where I start to learn that life is more about discovering who I am and understanding uh, who I am as a person. And that's what makes this whole life really, really meaningful for me at this point. So you say like outdoor sports, like so you're quite adventurous. So if you could, yeah. I mean, you don't have to say it, but if you could recommend people, especially in the KL, what is the best hiking spot according to you? Okay, so uh, recently I went to Cameron Highland. It's actually a pretty secluded place. So it's like a, it's like a four hour drive to Cameron Highland, which is in Pahang. Okay. All right. So it's a four hour drive. And then you can't drive your car in to the forest. So there will be people picking you up using a truck. So it's like each truck is going to be carrying like what? Eight to 10 people. And then it's going to bring you all the way into the jungle. So the jungle has no line, there's no signal whatsoever. So it's really, really just you and yourself. You're going to go hiking. You're going to go to the, to the waterfall, everything. Uh, it's, it's basically you connecting with nature all over again, which which some which is something I didn't get to do my earlier days. And when I get to do that, it made me realize that life is so much more than just the materials. It's, it's so much more. It's, it's, it's about discovering yourself. It's about inspiring others. It's about just impacting yourself and others in a way that is positive. So tell me a little bit special quality or an interest about you that people may not know, just looking at you, Joe. All right, so uh, I think most of my friends would say I'm a very determined or some would say I'm stubborn. It's okay. because uh, some might not know that I actually came from a, a fitness background, meaning that I was a professional bodybuilding and also fitness coach. So uh, I was uh, representing Malaysia for pretty, pretty good number of shows as well. So some people might not know that I'm a, I'm somebody from the fitness line, and then I'm moving towards the pageant industry. Yeah. Okay. So you have a fitness background. So how long did you do that, and what did you learn from doing like you know, fitness or like going to the gym, um, getting this incredible body? Because we have seen it. There's a couple of videos of you like almost naked. <laughs> We're showing you abs, so we have seen it. So what did you learn from that? Uh, one thing I learned about fitness is that uh, it actually shaped me as a person because um, people who, who work hard to get the physique that they desired right. did not land it without with surprise. It's always, there's so much hard work behind uh, and it requires so much of a person where it really drains a person a lot. So I did it a um, few years back, like about five years. I did five years and I realized that uh, as much as I love fitness and also uh, building, bodybuilding, uh, I think that part of me is already ended. It's because I realized that I've already gotten what I wanted to get out of it, which is uh, le learning to embrace the heart. I think learning to embrace a struggle is something that I really got out of this spot. It, it took so much of me, but it also taught me so much. So, uh, yeah, it taught me so much to the point where uh, it gives me so much opportunity at this point as well. Yeah. Okay. And why did you transition from bodybuilding or the fitness to the uh, beauty patch? Because it's not really the safe route, right? Why did you go from one route to uh, another? direction 
Um, the reason why uh, I chose to enter Manhunt is because I uh, I know that Manhunt is a uh, such a such a beautiful or uh, great platform for me to share my purpose. So um, from young, I've always believed in inspiring others. I've always, um, as a child, or when I start growing up, I realized that I really want to make an impact to people around me and also inspire others to live their best life ever. So uh, when I was in bodybuilding, I did I realized that I couldn't get that message out as much as if I were to join Manhunt or a beauty pageant where there is so much potential for me to be actually sharing my story, uh, sharing my experience, because some people might not know uh, my true story from, from a few years back up to today. And I realized that uh, beauty pageant is definitely a much better platform for that. I agree with you. I, mean, I, I run a pageant page, so I, I see so many people from all works you know, of life, but it's someone who has a, a PhD, master's, or someone who's doctor. People have very different backgrounds and I'm, I'm always interested to know people's story because I think it's such a great platform to just share about who you are, your personal growth, development and since you said, do you have a big uh, change in your physical attributes? Like, Do you have like a lot of body change? Because I don't really know how you look like when you're a teenager. <laughs> uh, um, when I was uh, high school, I actually I was about 50 kg when I uh, got bullied. Uh, in school as well for being okay. really skinny. I think that was one of the game changer because uh, at that point when I was, uh, I, if not mistaken, about 15 or 16 year old, mm -hmm. uh, getting bullied was something that I, I would say it discouraged me uh, in school where it made me realize that life, only I am able to help myself if I wanted to. And that's when I really took charge of things like I started going to the gym, I started uh, taking care of myself a little bit more. And fast forward, uh, really fall in love into the process of uh, fitness and then start competing at the age of 19, uh, about five years and also made it internationally. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't mind sharing a little bit more about your fitness journey. So you said you competed nationally and internationally, right? So what were those yeah. competitions and where did you compete? All right, so um, I started off competing internationally in Singapore. So I got my Asia Pro Cut. So basically, uh, for fitness competition, in order for you to get uh, to the inter international stage, you need a Pro Cut. Uh, so I get my Pro Cut in Singapore, and then I competed in New Zealand as well, as well as uh, USA, uh, California. So I did a few international shows and then proceeded to changing my federation to uh, IFBB, which is a Macau. So about four to five international competitions and a few more local ones. Okay, so, so you have been to like a lot of different places just uh, as a yeah. part of fitness and represented Malaysia differently, not beauty passion, but in a different way. And now you get back to your representative country. So I'm sure you're very proud of it. And who is helping you? Because you know, when you're competing in a beauty passion, you cannot do it in, uh, individually. There needs to be a team behind you. So how is preparation going on and who is helping you in this journey towards Matt uh, Yeah, so I'm very thankful for my national director, Ikmal. So um, he helped me a lot about uh, my wardrobe as well. And also my coach, which is Nizam, which helped me in my catwalks and also uh, my coach, Pravin, which helped me with my Q&A, my answering and my presentation. So um, everyone's playing a really, really big part. And I, I have a really supportive team, a uh, supportive family that actually, I would say, believe in me when on times where I couldn't believe in myself. I still remember, uh, some might not know, but I actually was facing quite a downturn uh, two to three months ago. I was facing uh, some depression due to work, due to career. I was having depression, uh, constant anxiety. And uh, I, I thought to myself that this might be it. I might, this might be uh, a really, really hard time because um, I think I posted on Instagram as well. I showed how I look. I was really out of shape two to three months ago. And I think at that point, I only had two choices. I either go on and choose to give 100% or I throw in the towel and quit. 
But a part of me knew that I don't want to let the people who believe in me down. They, they believe in me and when I couldn't believe in myself. So I took one step every single day, giving myself a little bit more, 1% every single day. And I realized that life gets better over time, whether you know it or not. You heal from things that, that breaks you. And I realized that uh, you can actually go through whatever you go through. And that's when I, I get happier and really uh, come to this stage where I'm really, really blessed to be given this opportunity to be representing Malaysia uh, for Manhunt and really, really will give my very, very best uh, this coming weekend. And I'm, I'm sure you will, because you have already made the country really proud in bodybuilding competitions, and now you are entering the beauty passion. So you see, you had a bit of a dark moment about three, four months ago, right? So, what motivated you, encouraged you to keep pushing forward? Because if you in my YouTube channel, a lot of people have uh, some sort of um, depression or anxiety because you know there's people from all all across the different backgrounds, right, who watch the videos too. So, uh, what motivated you, and how would you encourage people watching this interview? that life gets better in the end. Okay, so, um, I would say that, you know, previously, uh, I don't believe in tarot. Do you know tarot cards? Oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I have it too, actually. Oh, you have it too? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, I was actually doing uh, one of these tarot readings with uh, mm -hmm. Rhythm. So what happened was he actually, when he took out my car, he told me that, oh, Joash, uh, your life might be a little bit dark. He told me that. And at that point, I was like uh, a little bit discouraged, I would say. It's like I was a bit discouraged because dark means something bad, right? Everyone yeah. equates dark as something negative. So in my perception is, uh, I'm going to go through a lot of things that I don't want to go through. So at a point I was quite devastated, but then it really happened. You know, I gone through a, 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 a series of dark moments, but one thing I realized through this whole moment is that darkness is not necessarily something bad. You wouldn't be enjoying your life if there's no darkness. Uh, as much as I wish I didn't go through the darkness, but the darkness is what helped me grow into the person I am today. Uh, and anyone who is actually experiencing something, uh, whether it's a low time or depression or anxiety, trust me, uh, whatever you're going through is just temporary. Whatever you're going through is just in your head. A lot of things, you magnify the problem. Your life is so much better than that and you have not seen your better days yet. There is so much more days for you to see and always have faith in your life because today you might be in your worst state and tomorrow it might be your best day. Life is surprising okay life is so surprising it's because no one knows what's what's going to happen the next day so embrace every single day and life is meant to be lived not to be controlled we shouldn't be controlling life so okay. live life enjoy every single day spend your time with your loved ones and count your blessing I mean, yeah. every single day you remind yourself that that's that's really helpful. Yes. And do you think you're doing fitness because you're quite an athletic person, right? You, you like to you know, work out a lot and put your, make sure that you are doing fitness or some kind of outdoor sport. Do you think that also helped you, motivate you, encourage you? Because nowadays a lot of people are on the phones, especially social media has been quite addictive and that has kind of drained the energy like every single day. So people don't really want to go out that much or they don't want to do it, go to the gym that often. So do you think that also helped you in any way, shape or form? Definitely. So I believe that um, health is not just physical. So you have to take care of your mental health, your physical health, emotional health, spiritual health. 
So every aspect is equally important. The moment you start uh, neglecting one or another, that's where the problems start arising. Yeah. So talking about beauty passions, uh, I don't know in, in Manhattan they have it, but usually in female beauty passions or the, uh, like uh, Mr. Global, Mr. International, or Supernational, they also have a charity work, social advocacy. So can you talk about your social project? Social project? Uh, I'm not sure if Manhattan has... Uh, they don't have it? Okay. Uh, could you elaborate more about the social uh, Just any charity work you have done prior to competing at the international pageant. Have you been part of any charity work or charity event? Uh, we did, but it's not it's not for the pageant. We do it separately from our own. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think about a few months back, my team and I, so I, I'm actually uh, handling personal training teams in Malaysia, in KL especially. We think that we have studios around KL where we run personal training, training clients. So what we did um, for Christmas was that we went to the uh, orphanage. We went to the orphanage and really helped uh, handle one whole day of uh, price giving, uh, not only price giving, but events as well to really help these kids. Because I believe that um, there's no point if you climb the ladder without giving back. So I've always believed in helping one another, inspiring one another. That's why we chose to do the orphanage and also uh, help to make them feel a little bit more blessed, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the reason I wanted to know is because usually when people think of beauty passion, they only think of like physique, right? Like a guy with the best face, 10 out of 10, great body, uh, great runway, but that's about it. But nowadays, even male passions are focusing slowly in the direction of female beauty passion, where it's much more than that for about social advocacy or social project. So that's why I wanted to know if you have done any charity project. It doesn't have to be as a title holder, it could be before. So you have done mm. it, uh, helping the children in orphanage. So it yeah. seems that like you do have some charity work prior to this. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to move to a different type of question. I feel like we're asking a lot of like deep questions. I want to kind of ask yeah. you a fun question. Uh, if you could be an element, uh, one of these elements, since you're Chinese, right? Uh, okay, so earth, wind, fire, and water, which element best represents you and why? I would say that fire represents me the best. It's because uh, I think from a young age, I am a very, very passionate person. It's like I'm a, I'm an all of all in or nothing kind of person. Mm -hmm. So nobody can really control me. Like um, I remember when when I did my studies, uh, I actually dropped out from college. It's okay. because it's not something that I wanted to do. Uh, everyone was telling me that it's a wrong choice. Everyone told me that uh, if you don't have a degree, you will, you will end up failing in life. You won't be having a securing a good job and things like that. But uh, it's, it's just me following my heart. I'm somebody who really follow my heart and, and passionate about things that I believe uh, serve my purpose. So that's why, that's also one of the reasons why Manhunt is something that I am so blessed to be given this opportunity to be joining. And also uh, because it serves my purpose as somebody who wants to inspire. Yeah. Right. So you, you told me, um... Uh, so what education did you do? Sorry, you say you, you dropped out of the university, right? So yeah. prior to doing that, what were you studying? Uh, I was doing uh, marketing. Marketing. So yeah. so you said you, you complete the, the, the degree and now you're working as a fitness coach, right, in, in KL. So do you think this might be a really good uh, example to people watching the videos uh, who, because they know a lot of the time, especially Asian parents, pressure the children to have at least a bachelor's degree and like go to a, get higher education, whether it's in the country or uh, in Western countries like the US or Australia or the UK. So what message do you have for people who think that it's really important to get a degree um, and because they're kind of scared of not getting a job after that? And since you have already kind of gone through that process, what would you say? Do you think like education is important in order to get a successful job? I dropped out before I got my degree. Okay. Right, so uh, I did two years and then I dropped out. So I didn't get my degree. But for anyone who is um, in college or somebody who is planning to go for college, I would say that in the end of the day, nothing is going to guarantee whether you get a job or whether you'll be successful by yourself. 
So following your heart is ultimately the most important thing you can actually do. So don't listen. I say, uh, follow your heart. If, if you believe that you are able to chase after your dream, believe it and give a hundred percent to it, whether it requires a degree or not, if you give a hundred percent for yourself, you're going to achieve your goals anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because that's nowadays they have been so many conflict. Um, I mean, because I, I have been blessed that I've got the education from the UK, but, um, and my family were not that pressuring. Like he said, like, if you want to go to college, you can do it. I still do it. Right? And, but I know in Asia, like, parents are super pressuring the children to you know, get a yeah. degree, at least a bachelor's. And, and I was just quite surprised that he said you did not complete the education. So I, I wanted to know your perspective in this topic, because in the UK, it's not really required for you to go to university if you don't want to. Um, finish school, after you finish school, you could either get a job or you could go to college. So I hope that hopefully Asian parents watching this video, please do not pressure your kids. Because I feel like there's so much pressure in kids in Asia. Do you agree or like, do you disagree with that? Definitely. My parents was so against me dropping out. Right. They think that I wouldn't make it, uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't make it. But uh, yeah, after I dropped out, I actually set up my own uh, personal training studio. And then fast forward, I opened a few other branches in KL and also had a few teams running for me. And uh, that's when we really scaled things up. And then at one point, my parents actually really supported what I do and really believed in me. That's when, that's when I realized that uh, you you got to choose the life that you want to live. You know, your parents can't choose it. Your friends can't choose it. Society can't choose it. You know what you really want. You know your purpose in life. And following your purpose in life is going to guarantee you uh, the most fulfilled life you can have. Because you're not, you're being so authentic to yourself. You're being so real. I, I believe that if you are somebody who is so real or authentic, it won't go wrong. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if it's something you're really passionate about, whether it's a creative degree or just creative field, not every you know, job needs a degree or, or high education. So if it's something that is maybe outside of the you know, 90, 94, 95 job, I think you should definitely do it because even though I do have a degree, I kind of said, you know, I'm going to do completely opposite of that. So I'm at the moment in Thailand teaching English, which is completely different to my actual bachelor's degree that I do have. So I just wanted to get out of that because my, yeah, even though my family is not that like typical Asian family, I still don't want to feel like uh, I have to follow the responsibility of like being the perfect son. So yeah, I agree with you, even though we have completely different like lifestyle, you're more into fitness, I'm more into like education. But I, I agree with you. Like if it's something that you really like, if you're really passionate about something, I think you should do that instead of just following the you know like the crowd. Because I know in Asia the, the mentality is you need to follow the herd, right? Like a sheep, you need to follow everyone else. Yeah. So hopefully you could be an individual self. Yeah. Okay, let's go to a bit more fun questions again. I want to kind of like change the, the questions a little bit because you know if it's like the same <laughs> same vibe, I feel like it's going to be like too serious. <laughs> so, yeah, what is your favorite yeah. food? Uh, it doesn't have to be Malaysian food, but what is your favorite food? Uh, my favorite food is actually Malaysian food. Okay, which one? You, you can you can take me away from Malaysia, but you can't take Malaysia away from me. Okay. So, uh, my favorite food is actually char kway teow. I'm not sure if you know it's. How do you spell it? I'm going to try to. C-H-A-R. Let me just type uh -huh. it down. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, some people might say it's uh, similar to Pad Thai. Yes, it looks like Pad Thai. That's what I thought. Like, yeah. It sounds very similar. Yeah. Yeah. But it tastes slightly different. Like uh, it has so much flavor and so much uh, richness in, in this dish is so unhealthy as well so as somebody who enjoys eating but he has to uh, set a good example this thing these two things really contradict to one another but yeah i really love this dish because it is something that so it tastes it has so much taste in it it has so much flavor to it it has some burnt flavor it has nice uh texture of the noodles, especially the one you get from Penang. 
Yeah. Right. Uh, that, that sounds amazing. It does look like yeah, patai. Like I was just, I just wanted to see how it looks like. I just googled it. It's almost the same. So <laughs> is it a yeah. seafood? I see some like crabs. Not crabs. Uh, There's some prawns. Squid. Prawns. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's some prawns. Yeah. Some seafoods in, in it. It looks yeah. really nice. Yeah. So the most popular one, or the one you really like, is the one in Penang, the the north of yeah. uh, Malaysia. Yeah. Oh, okay. thank so, you. you, you have, yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay, so the next question for you is, uh, let's answer this one. So who has been the most influential person in your life? And why has that person been such an essential part of your, your life so far? Um, one of the most influential person that I would say is actually my mom. I think um, we might have disagreement and also uh, conflicts here and there. But I believe that she is somebody who plays a, such an important role in my life. I think um, whenever I think about anyone, um, I think she represents true love the, the best. Like she, the way she actually cared for me and my siblings, um, I can say that it's, it's out of the world. Meaning that if I were to think, if I, if I were, were to feel unloved one day, the moment I think that Nobody loved me. And I think about her. All of that don't matter anymore. That's sweet. So, and I, yeah. I think you know this, Mother's Day was looking on the 12th, so like a few days ago. So did yeah. you have like celebration with your mom? Like, did you give her like nice gifts yeah. or like dinner? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We brought her out for really nice Sri Lankan food. Uh, okay. Food was amazing. And then really uh, gave her some stuff as well. Oh, that's sweet. I was looking at Instagram. I can see that you're experimenting with your fashion, you know, here and there, especially for the international fashion. So, how do you describe your personal style, and who is the style inspiration? Okay, this is a bit. Uh, okay, so for the style, I normally uh, like to get from Pinterest. Try to try to get more uh, fit, uh, outfit inspiration. Yeah, so the outfits and everything, I actually try to find them online. Uh, not a particular designer, but uh, yeah, just something that really suits my style and I'm confident in it and, and believe that I will, look, uh, I will look good in it and then I will be trying them out. Yeah, right. so I don't and particularly it, look, yeah. Yeah, sorry, can I continue? Because there's two two parts of the questions. So who is it? Yeah, so, so there's no particular person or a designer that I look up to. Um, it just depends on pace. Okay, got it. Yeah. And I think like you kind of remind me of like the Hong Kong actors from the nineties. Like if maybe if you could look up to them and like in well it's in Google or Pinterest and like get some ideas, I feel like you will fit that one. Like, do you like nineties style? Like nineties fashion? Uh I don't mind trying them. Okay, you can experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Nineties Hong Kong style, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it will really suit to your look because I mean, of course, you're like ethnically Chinese, right? But like, I haven't really yeah. seen that style on your Instagram when I was looking at it. So I think it could look really great. <laughs> Maybe you can send you know, me a few examples. I'll send you an Instagram actually after this, yeah. Because that's, it was really famous. Um, you're 27, right, at the moment. So you're born in 1998? 1997. 97, sorry, yeah. Okay, we're almost yeah. the same age. I'm 1994. And it was like such a booming, the fashion scene in, in the 90s. So yeah, I think you would probably like it. Um, anyway, so next question for you is the future, right? So you're 27 now. So let's say when you're 37, 10 years down the line, where do you see yourself? Uh, all right. So I think I get this answer a lot. Uh, I, I, I get this question a lot. And I ask this question a lot as well. Because, uh, <laughs> I run, I run a personal training studio. I interview uh, trainers. I interview my uh, co-workers as well. So asking people, uh, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? But uh, this is the second time I was asked this question. Where do I see myself in 10 years? So um, by the time 10 years, I'm almost 37 years old. I would say that I would like to be someone who is um, able to impact and also inspire others at a larger scale. Hmm. And if I'm able to travel around the world, sharing my experience, sharing my story to 
more individuals. Um, that would be something that uh, would mean the world to me because it serves my purpose and it's also uh, something that uh, is truly what I really wanted since young to be able to I want somebody to look at me and say that it's because of you that I didn't give up on my dreams. It's because of you that I chose to go on with my life. It's because of you I I chase uh, after things that I thought I couldn't. So uh, I've always wanted to be the person who is able to say that I live my life because I this is the cho uh, this is the choice that I wanted to. It's not anyone else's choice. It's just my choice. So I want people to meet, know me for that. Right. Um, and since you have a fitness studio at the moment, right? So maybe you can also expand that. So maybe in different cities in Malaysia, that would also be a great business. Yeah. Yeah. That's the time. So I'm going to ask you a fun question now, because I feel like I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm going back and forth with the questions. So if you could meet or talk to one person from history, they could be living or dead. Who would you like to have a dinner date with? And why? Okay, for this question, uh, I would say one of the person that I would like to meet is actually one of my friend that passed. It's actually a friend that passed last year. All right. So um, the reason why I wanted to meet him was really to. Uh, to spend more time with him, you know, because um, he was having actually mental illness. And then uh, I really wanted to get closer to him, get really closer to him and let him know that people actually care for him and really be there for him, you know, like really spend the, the the whole time with him and really understanding uh, him as a person. Since we didn't meet for some time, it, it's actually a childhood friend. It's actually a high school friend. So uh, once I heard about the, the whole news, I, I, I realized that life is really short. So if you give me a chance to meet somebody in the past, I would, I would choose to meet him. It's because I want him to know that life is really uh, amazing. I want him to know that life is actually worth living. There's so much people that actually care for you. And yeah, I think that's really something I would I would meet him for. Okay, that was really sweet. And I can say you have so much like, empathy and kindness that you like to you know, spread out to your friends and your loved ones. And I think that's a great uh, quality to have in a passion king. Because like I said, nowadays beauty passion have just changed so much, right? Like they're looking for just more than just a pretty face. So it's nice that you do have some kind of substance or a purpose. So hopefully you could help people, especially the ones who do have a bit of mental illness or depression or anxiety. So you could just push them through um, in any way, shape or form uh, through your project or just your work in general. Since you're from Malaysia, I know Michelle Yeoh is from Malaysia and I think you know who she is, right? Michelle Yeoh? Yeah. She, she yeah. won Oscar last year. Um, I know this question is, I, I wanted to like kind of challenge you. I thought you were going to pick her, but you picked your friend, that's fine. Uh, if you could meet Michelle Yeoh, what is the first thing you're going to tell her? Or like any question you could ask her. I say that what uh, the one question that I will ask her is that uh, what would be your number one advice for someone to be achieving success like yours? It's right. because I think uh, she is somebody who all Malaysians would look up to, who really, really chase after her dream and really overachieve what she wanted to <laughs> and. That's really an inspiration, I would say, that somebody who go through so much and achieve so much. I think uh, every one of us should actually learn something from her. And that would be a really, really good question to ask her, especially if I get the chance to meet her one day. Yeah. I think you have the chance, especially after you get the title of Kutnana International. You could, you're also a pride of Malaysia, right? And I don't know if you know, this, but she actually did compete in a beauty pageant I think back in the 1970s. Yeah. I don't know exactly, but I'll put it on the screen. Um, and yeah, she wasn't. She went to Miss World. She represented Malaysia. She did not win the competition. And she did a lot of like Hong Kong movies, uh, you know, uh, in Mandarin and also Cantonese. And after a couple of years there, then she went to Hollywood. 
a lot later because you know a lot of people say you can only be successful in Hollywood when you're young or you're 18 or 20. But I think she went when she was about 30 years old, like past a lot, a lot older, a lot mature than a lot of the young uh, actresses in Hollywood. So I, I think she's such a great role model. And I was literally crying. I don't know if like how you're feeling, but I was, I was crying. I was like, yes, finally an Asian actress winning an Oscar. And I was like, finally. <laughs> so that's just an yeah. incredible moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think I believe everyone's journey is the same. You know, like I, I'm pretty sure she is quite discouraged when she didn't place very well for her pageantry. But I believe everything happens for a reason, you know. In the end, she, she succeeds in her own ways and she will chase after what she wanted. That's how she, she end up where she is. So I think everyone just got to be enjoying the moment. Like, so what if, if things happen? Yes. Right? Everything is happening for the greater good. I'm with yeah. you on that, definitely. So almost at the end of the interview, I have about five more questions. So almost there. We're 40 minutes recorded. Uh, so let's go to more more fun question I want to ask. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. This is a fun one. You don't have to say it because it's a bit personal. Who is your celebrity crush and why? Celebrity crush. Wow. That's a good one. I would say. Megan Fox. Yeah, I find her really, really charming and also uh, she looks really, really good, especially uh, in some of the movies that she played. I really enjoy her movies and also uh, I like her character a lot, actually. Yeah, so Megan Fox. Yeah, I mean, and also. Yeah. I feel like Megan Fox is so different than the usual Hollywood actresses. Like she doesn't really want to do like you know the conventional things, so she goes for roles that is not really the stereotypical pretty girl. Like I know she's definitely a call, but like, her characters that she did is just yeah, I think it's like really mysterious and she doesn't yeah. shy away from doing uh, unconventional roles. Yeah, which I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, definitely. Okay, the next one for you is look at this one. So what has been a proudest achievement in your life so far? Um, well, one of the proudest achievements would be me setting up my studio. Uh, it's because I think I started off, uh, remember the story where I dropped out of college and everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's the proudest moment is because um, even my parents felt like uh, they are proud of me. And I owe them so much uh, all these years. And when I realized that I actually made them proud, it actually makes me feel a sense of accomplishment and also a sense of fulfillment. Is uh, my parents actually put so much, uh, I put my parents so much, put them through so much that uh, them feeling proud would be something that actually uh, made me feel really, really happy. So uh, when I first opened, set up that studio, it was really a moment of uh, the start of a journey. And also for me to basically uh, tell them that you don't have to worry. I'm able to do this uh, by myself. So yes. uh, because all these years they have been uh, slowly trying to be believe in me and support me. So once I realized that they were actually trying to support me, trying to believe in me, it, it actually touched me. And that's when I really felt like, wow, I love my parents for that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, parents, at, at the start, I think they will be a bit more tough. Like, they will love to show like, tough love. And yeah. it's just put a lot of, whether it's about pressuring you to get the, the best education or get the best yeah. job, they just care for you. And in the end, Whatever I actually take, they will be there to support you. And I'm, I'm happy that you have got that connection with your family. So since you are representing Malaysia at the Manor International Pageant, what aspect of being Malaysian would you like to represent? So, because now you're an ambassador for your country, right, at the international platform. So how, do you, how would you like to represent Malaysia at the Manor International? I believe all Malaysians are really, really friendly people. I'm not sure. Have, uh, you visited Malaysia, right? So Malaysia. I haven't been to Malaysia yet, but I have, I have Malaysian friends. Like I do know about Malaysia. Yeah. 
Ah, okay. So Malaysians are generally very, very friendly and also very helpful. They might look a bit conservative, but generally they are really, really helpful. So if you're a tourist and you're here, uh, Malaysians will try their best to help you as much as we can. So I want to bring that aspect of uh, Malaysians as well as our culture. So uh, a lot to do with our matiks. Uh, do you know batik shirts? Oh yes, uh, it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a traditional Malaysian uh, textiles. Yeah, like shirts for yeah. Them. yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, so that are uh, something that I want to showcase to the world as well. Uh, that's something really beautiful about Malaysia. So the outfit and also Malaysians' personality and also their friendliness. Yes, uh, because I I can definitely agree with you, especially friendliness. Because I have two friends from Malaysia. And, uh, we got close uh, during the university. One is from Penang, another one is from KL. And they're super helpful, even though I just asked, like, what's happening? Which like, <laughs> just give me like, so much help. Uh, even though I only asked for one question, she would help me for like 10 questions. So yeah, they are super helpful and just so outgoing. So I think just having a Malaysian friend really helps. And also they speak incredible English. Uh, that's something you didn't really mention, but you guys have, uh, I think, British English, right? The education right. Uh, system. Yeah. So maybe because of that, it's a lot easier to communicate. So if you are, let's say, a, a tourist who speaks mostly English, maybe American, British, or from Australia, it's a lot easier to have communication with people from Malaysia as well. So I think you'll have so much uh, an easy time to make friends in, in the international pageant after you come to Thailand. And have you actually connected with any of the uh, contestants from the competition uh, prior to uh, arriving in Thailand? Uh, yeah, we actually... Uh chat once or twice with uh, other contestants as well. I've already, uh, I know most of them. So yeah, okay. looking forward to really look, uh, really meeting them, making new friends, and also uh, learning a, a thing or two from them, and also sharing my experience with them as well. Yes, um, I think I have one more question. The last one might be the most important one. So imagine I'm a judge, right? You're on the stage. Yeah. I don't know if you have a Q&A, but just imagine like a role play. I'm a judge, yeah. and I really want to know why do you think you should be the next Manhattan International? Okay, so um, I believe that uh, being a pageant, uh, I believe that winning a pageant, uh, male pageant, whether it's male pageant or female pageant, looks is very important. Outer appearance is super important. Your physique is super important. Your catwalk is so important. But I think there are other aspects that people actually do not know about. And I think those are actually the aspects that really needed uh, to be in this world. And I believe that um, pageantry is really one of the best platform to bring so much positivity to this world. Especially uh, when I start asking myself, what is the impact I want to bring to this world? And I realized that I've always wanted to inspire younger men uh, or younger individuals to live their best life ever. Don't let uh, your experience or your struggle to define you. Instead, uh, treat these experiences, treat this struggle, treat those downtime as scars that you embrace. So I believe in inspiring others. And I think that's the message that I really want people to know. Uh, I want everyone who experienced me as somebody who helped them through a tough time in their life. And when, they, when somebody look up to me, uh, when somebody look at me, they know that no matter what happens, you can go through that. Yes. Yeah. And we have come to the end. I had a great time talking to you, Joe, uh, Joe Ash. And uh, do you have any message that you'd like to give to our viewers or Malaysian people watching this interview or international fans to anything you'd like to tell to the viewers watching this interview? Okay, so um, to every fans out there, Malaysians who are actually watching and also supporting uh, through, uh, through the start or even helping me in any way at all, I am truly, truly, truly blessed to be able to be representing Malaysia and also uh, truly blessed to be given this chance to be helping you or uh, impacting you in a way, you are, the, you are the people that actually give me this uh, whole opportunity for it. And if anything, I would uh, really appreciate for you guys to keep supporting me as uh, Pageant Week is coming close. So thank you guys for standing with me and I will do my very 
very best, 100% for this week. Thank you. Yes, make sure to support him in his journey towards the Mahan International, which is starting from this weekend, right? You, you're going to be in Thailand in Saturday. So yeah. It's from this yeah. weekend, and the finals, I, I believe, is on the 26th, is it? The finals, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Final is on the Saturday, the 26th. So it's almost a, a week pageant. So just follow him in the activities and give him support on social media, which you can see on the screen. Just give him a follow, love, and support him. So saying that I had a great time talking to you, Joe. Uh, so if you enjoyed our interview, please like and share this video too. And also subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're almost at 200K um, on our YouTube. So we can achieve that, I think, by the hopefully end of the year. So saying that, thank you.